Hey again guys and welcome back. Um, when I'm down here in my workspace I like to turn on my LEDs. I've got uh, some right above the camera here which ironically were another PCBWay project like this one today is. And I've got some over on my right hand side you know underneath my shelves over my second workbench in here. Um, and I just love the light that it produces. Well Recently, I've plugged in the 12 volt power supply that I use to power these lights uh, into a, a power meter and I noticed that it's almost 90 watts of LEDs. So I had to build a little something uh, so I can control the amount of output these LEDs have and I think it's going to be the start of a long sort of infrastructure project, of course, sponsored by PCBWay. And since this is sponsored by PCBWay, that means that you can make the exact boards I'm making just by following the link in the description. So here they are. Got some stickers. I think it's their eighth anniversary very shortly. Also got a pen, pretty neat. So these boards, let me open these up and show you what these are all about. So this is SE. Me, Simple Electronics, switching station. How many boards? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes you get an extra one. It depends how many they uh, manufacture for you, I guess. Um, but anyways, this is just a simple board which has only a few components. So first and foremost, I have some screw terminals. So these will accept the uh, 12 volts coming in from that uh, 12 volt power supply. Then I've got these screw terminals, which will uh, divvy out the 12 volts to four separate circuits. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and these are all the grounds. All the grounds are kind of on this side. Ground, ground, and these are four separate circuits. Then I have uh, these switches here, which I admittedly had to steal from other kits and projects because I don't didn't really have any relatively high current switches. And these should fit in here as long as I line up the uh, the pins here. So these will go in there. And then these guys will allow me to turn on and off separate circuits. So I'll just be able to have, you know, the, the simple glow from my LEDs. Or if I want more light or less light, I'll just be able to turn on and off more and more circuits. Um, these won't fit very well because again I stole them from a kit so I'm gonna have to you know heat up the the solder on them but for the ones without it there we go should fit just fine and on top of that I'm gonna have these little holders go on and these will hold fuses so these will be fused separate circuits I only need uh, two I might use three uh, for now and then uh, when I need to expand on it, you know, I have more to expand. I also want access to, you know, just regular 12 volts. So I might break one off into an XD60. Let's get started. Let's start with some of the more difficult things to solder. Uh, these uh, screw terminals, they have quite a bit of metal on them. You can't kill the metal. Um, but they also have, you know, big heat sinks very hard to uh, to solder these things in so what I do is I heat up the pad and I push on the pin and pushing on the pin with my soldering iron allows me to let go of the terminal then I can go get my solder I can flow solder on here the the iron is very hot I'm running this at uh, 420 degrees Celsius for leaded solder that's quite hot but I need more thermal mass don't exactly have the best soldering tip for this. So then I'm just going to press up like that, let that heat penetrate everything, and then let go. And that should solidify. And once it's solidified, then we can move on to the next ones to try to uh, capitalize on the heat on this area here. That should be good. All right, let's grab the next one. Same deal. Sometimes I can do this uh, just by poking it through from the back. But these holes are kind of tiny. There we go. All right, same thing now. I'm going to heat up this pad and I'm going to push on the pin. There we go. It holds the terminal in place. 
I'm gonna put the uh, gonna put the links for all the components you need to build your own one of these in the description. They should also be on the PCBWay shared project page as well. There we go. That solidify. There we go. Same thing with this one here. Just gonna line it up here, drag it back into the hole it goes. Press down like that. Same thing, gonna clamp it like so. Now I just have to go over and do the rest of the pins, but I will spare you. All right, those are all flowed through. Don't worry about the brown, that's just the, the hot uh, rosin. Um, and next we're gonna solder in the fuse holders. Now these are, you know, through hole parts, but they're still a bit of a pain to solder. So basically I'm gonna shove it in there, pop it over like this. And I'm gonna hold sort of uh, this side of it and I'm gonna solder the other side using the same technique except this one the pin doesn't stick through so it's going to be a bit of a pain here it, it sticks through just barely so you can't knock it so heat up heat up heat up and then flow solder and then careful not to burn yourself pinch it there we go that's one done and so I'm just going to do every single one of them like that you have to push hard make sure it's level Put the tip on the pad and push and pushing towards the left side of your screen here and flow a little bit of solder make sure not to burn yourself don't touch the pin that you're soldering you're only going to touch sort of you're soldering this one here you're only going to touch this one here these uh, footprints i could stand to make it a little bit um, smaller but I kind of like the fact that not all of these parts are exactly the same I mean you can get it even from the same seller see like this one these ones are shorter so I can't actually use that technique so I'm gonna move on to this one here Yeah, this one's a bit longer, so you can so I can use that technique now. Flow that solder, pinch it. There we go. Now for this one, I'm just going to rotate it. Yeah, see, it's not pressed through. Don't know if you can see that, but I'm just going to push it down a little bit on the bench, maybe. It wasn't pushed down into the holder as far. So now it should be solderable. Yeah, there we go. Still not ideal. No, not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna do this one off camera. That's done. Next thing are these switches. And eventually, uh, in the future, this project will be updated to use uh, relays instead of switches. And there'll, there'll be a reason for that, which will become apparent some other time. Um, these switches, though, uh, especially the cheap ones, these cheap rockers, they are extremely sensitive to heat. So we need to put this in. And then we need to get in and get out with the iron as soon as we can because they do not want to be overheated. Um, when you melt the plastic around where the terminal is, uh, what happens is it moves the terminal inside and the terminal is what actually switches. And so you have to just be quick about it, switch your footing and go on you can't can't linger there too long there we go that's it that's all I'm gonna do on that one now I just need to install the other ones now one of them I ruined by desoldering I might put it in anyways and you know maybe in the future when I take a look at that thermal cam we can see if this thing's heating up let me do that now
All right, so now here is everything installed. And uh, I just want you to listen here if you can spot the difference. Basically, uh, this switch is knackered. That's going to be for a different video. Um, now, I am just going to put a 7.5 amp um, fuses into these holders here. Now, these holders are very tight, and so if you need to pull these out, you kind of need to support the board with one hand and pull with the other, but hopefully that won't be much of a problem. You can also loosen these up a little bit by uh, just shoving a, uh, a small screwdriver through there. Now the other two circuits, so these two circuits will be my lighting. So I get to have a little bit of, you know, mood lighting here and here or here, one or the other, but both together is quite a bit of wattage. But basically, uh, these two here, the other two beside, will be like auxiliary 12 volt outlets and I'll just put like an XT60 or maybe a, a car sort of uh, uh, an automotive fuse adapter on there so that I can just use the 12 volts as I wish kinda like that there we go and uh, don't forget that your uh, your fuse here protects your wires so typically if you use a fuse that is uh, smaller than the maximum current of your wires you'll be absolutely fine and that's what I intend to do here my wires are I believe they are 12 gauge 14 gauge something like that and they're going a short distance so that shouldn't be a problem let me uh, screw this to the wall and then I'm going to install these uh, fork terminals and these fork terminals fit perfectly into these um, screw terminals and then, you know, positive, positive here, negative, negative there. Should be good to go. Well, that's it. It's uh, all completely installed now. And now I have a way to switch on and off the lights here and under the shelf. And also, interestingly, I get to tell how much power everything takes. So when everything is off, um, it only takes about 5 watts um, and that's just to run obviously the power supply and the fan inside and, and all the stuff but then my studio lights are only about 20 additional watts but the lights underneath the shelf they're they're big timing they're like 60 additional watts and so now if I want a little bit of ambiance lighting I'll just turn on you know the studio lights under here the cool thing about this kind of construction is it lets me add additional stuff as well um, like you saw here I have the XT60 so I can plug that into remote control receivers I can plug it into speed controllers I can do all sorts of things with that plug which I didn't have the ability to before because the you know the the, the screw terminals were really not at the right spot underneath the desk. And so stay tuned because these boards are nothing but an evolution. Uh, this is just step one. Um, next step I think is going to move to something like uh, with the relays uh, and then eventually some sort of uh, web control and then eventually some sort of automation. So. I hope you're interested in that stuff, and if you are, uh, hit the subscribe button and check all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.